Pandas is a fast, maybe even blazingly fast, powerful and easy to use open source data analysis and manipulation tool built on top of Python. But if you're not careful, Pandas can get slow, especially if you're dealing with larger data sets that use a lot of memory. To avoid that, it's helpful to know a bit about the different data types that Pandas has. So that's what I'll cover in today's video. I'll also show you how a simple mistake can result in your code using 90% more memory than needed, making it hard to scale to larger data sets. A more general thing that's going to help though is to simply design your code better. I have a free code diagnosis workshop that teaches you a particular mindset for reviewing and detecting problems in your code based on three factors. It's really practical. I'll show you how it works with real production code. So, iron.codes slash diagnosis. The link is also in the description of this video. If you want to start using Pandas in your Python project, then obviously you're going to have to install it. So you can simply do this with pip install pandas like so. And as you can see, I've already installed this because of course I've actually prepared this code example. So basically in Pandas, when we talk about data and types of data, there's two important data structures that you should know about, which is the data frame and the series. Basically, a data frame is a table like format. So it's going to have columns and rows in it with data. And part of data frame is a series, which is going to be a single column of information. So anything you do in Pandas basically works with these two main concepts. What you will often do in Pandas is import data from, let's say, a CSV or an Excel file, and then do some processing or analysis on that data. And what happens? Under the hood is that Pandas actually relies a lot on another tool, which is NumPy. So it uses NumPy arrays and D types for the various elements of the series. And that means it relies for a big part on the built in NumPy types. So things like floats, integers, booleans, these kind of things, they're basically all directly taken from NumPy. And that's nice because NumPy is built in C, so it's going to be very efficient, which is great. However, there are some limitations to what you can do with NumPy, since that's really built for numerical analysis, though, so the data types are pretty basic, so to speak. For example, it doesn't have a time zone aware date time representation. So as a result, Pandas has actually added a bunch of extra types that it uses on top of the built-in NumPy types. One of these is the time zone aware daytime type. A few other examples of types are the period D type, and that's used for, let's say, time series analysis, where you have a certain frequency and you want to model that. It also has a sparse matrix representation, which is basically a matrix that mostly has zero value. So you can store it more efficiently using this particular representation. It has types for, let's say, intervals, if you want to represent an interval in your data, and a couple of other things as well. In particular, one type that's interesting is the categorical type, and that I'm going to touch on a bit later. And finally, each of these built-in types also has a string representation, and anything else Pandas basically uses the object type. So if it doesn't know what it is, it's just going to use object. So what happens is that when you import data, with Pandas, it's going to try to infer the types from the data. And often it does a good job, but there are some cases where it's going to make the wrong assumptions. And if you don't take care of that properly, it's going to potentially have a huge impact on the performance and the memory utilization of your program. And this is exactly why it's so important to know a bit more about data types, how Pandas handles it, especially if you're working with bigger data sets. If Pandas detects that a type is wrong, you can use the as type method to convert manually from one type to another. Here you see an example of how that works. So in this case, we have one example where we're converting everything in the series to a float. And the second example only looks at columns A and C and converts those to Booleans and floats. Another example of type conversion in Pandas is to numeric. So here's a simple example of how if you, let's say, have some string data, but it's actually a number, you can use to numeric to convert those things to actual numbers. I want to show you a quick example of how this type conversion works in Pandas. So we have a file here that reads a data set of airports. So these are all the 
airports in the Netherlands. So this is the CSV file. One thing that actually really surprised me is how many airports there are in the Netherlands. I mean, we're like a tiny country, but there's like almost, if I scroll down, almost like a hundred airports. Actually, a lot of these airports are actually medical airports, so they're from uh, hospitals, but there's also some uh, military airports. And um, I have no idea what, for example, Stadskanaal airfield is. Actually, I grew up very close to that town. I never realized there was actually an airport there. So must not have attracted a lot of traffic, but who am I? Maybe uh, I just completely missed it when I was a kid. Anyway, we have this set of data, as you can see, there's like IDs, and we have an airport type and we have a name of the airport. We have some uh, longitude, latitude information. There is some uh, country location information, uh, websites. Um, and I have a file here where basically I have a couple of functions to read this airport data set from path. Uh, so that simply uses read CSV. Um, and then I have a, I'll talk a bit more about this part, but then I have a main function where basically I define the path and the file name, and then I'm simply going to read the airports from the file. But when you do that, so let me run this to show you what happens. And I'm printing out some information here to show you what's happening. So when you do that, you see that there's actually lots of wrong types that have been inferred by pandas. So here are all the columns that it got from the CSV file, but you see that counted uh, how many there are, but basically all the data types are of type object. And that basically means Pandas has no way to infer what the data actually is. The reason that this happens is actually that the second line here is a bunch of meta information about what each thing is. So it's basically that it's an ID, that it has a code, uh, there's a bunch of extra information, and that sort of throws off pandas in trying to infer what the types are supposed to be. So the second thing that I did here was I removed the metadata information. So basically that's actually almost the same kind of function, except that I'm skipping the first two rows so that it doesn't try to infer the types from the metadata, which is what was happening before. So when we look at the next part, so these are the types that pandas infers after we've removed the metadata row. So we still have all these columns, ID type, et cetera, et cetera. But now you see that a bunch of them have actually a different data type, like an integer or a float, like the ID, which is recognized as an integer or the latitude and longitude are represented by floats. This is already going to be much better because this means that pandas can now use the appropriate internal representation for the type of data, whereas object is very generic and that might not be very useful because then you'd have to do lots of conversions of types when you actually want to use the data. So this is still not perfect because there's still lots of these generic object types here. So often before you do any analysis, you might want to go through the different types that pandas inferred and actually switch them over to use the correct type. And I'll show you an example later in the video of why that is important. So what I've done here is, let me scroll down a bit more, is that after removing this metadata row, I've created here a simple dictionary, which contains a couple of mapping types. So basically I'm telling pandas, hey, the name is a string, continent is a string, the ISO country, ISO region, these are also strings. There's a Wikipedia link, there are keywords, etc. So then what I do is that I use as type, like I mentioned before, from that, and that works on the data frame to map each of these column names so that they're actually the correct type. So you can do this with dictionary like I'm showing here, but you can also do manually per column. Here we have an example where I do a manual conversion of last update, which when we print this, we see that it's been recognized as an object, but last updated is actually a date time. So I'm converting it here to date time. And you could also include it here. Basically, if you wanted that, then you would have to add a last updated entry, and then you specify it as a date time type. And you can even add the time zone between brackets if you want it to be time zone aware. So let's see what the types look like when we print this one more time. So that's this list. So now you see for all of these data types, we no longer have objects, but we have actually strings, booleans, and last update is of a date time type. Now, because we have the proper types in pandas, it's going to be a lot easier to do analysis of the data and also the internal representation of the data is going to match better with what we've read from the CSV file. Now, you might think, okay, well, then I'm done basically and now I can start processing all of the data. Well, not entirely because there is an issue if you try to 
use a large set of data. And I have another example. The Netherlands airport comma separated file is not that large. I mean, it has less than 100 lines, even though that's a lot of airports for a small country like Netherlands. But I have another data set here, which is this one. And this comes from Kaggle. And this is a data set belonging to an e-commerce website with some uh, customer information. So it has a bunch of IDs, zip codes. It has cities, states, basically data about customers of this particular company in Brazil. And as opposed to Dutch airports, this actually has lots and lots of lines. I think there is about, uh, well, you can see it here, almost 100,000 entries, which still is not a huge data set. I mean, it's not millions of entries, but it's a lot more. And if you don't think properly about how your data is represented and when you're doing that efficiently, you might run into problems when you want to analyze the data. If we look back at this type conversion that I did with the airport, here I'm mainly using strings, actually. But strings themselves are actually not very efficient representations of data, especially if you look at this data set. For example, if we, would, if we use strings for all of these cities and states in particular, well, that's going to take up a lot of space for things that are often exactly the same string. So for example, here we have different states, SP, SC, et cetera. So there's a limited number of states in Brazil. There's also a limited number of cities, even though there will be, of course, more cities than states. So if you simply represent everything as strings, there's going to be a lot of duplication in your data set. And with hundreds of thousands of records, the duplication is going to be a problem if you need to analyze that. What Pandas has is a so-called categorical type that optimizes for these types of situations where you have a string representation of something in your data, but the number of possible representations is smaller than the number of entries in your list of records. But Pandas doesn't recognize this automatically. So you'd have to manually indicate that a particular type is a categorical type and then pandas can do that optimization for you. So here I have another script where I have a function that reads the data set. So this is an example where I'm simply reading the whole data set from that CSV file. So that just contains a bunch of uh, customers. I have a helper function that calculates how much memory is being used by this particular data frame. So pandas has a memory usage method on data frame that's actually very useful for this. Uh, you have to make sure to set deep to true so it measures the actual data being used by uh, object types. And then what this function does is that it simply prints the memory usage. And then I have a function that converts certain columns in the data frame to uh, categorical types. So basically what I do here is I create a copy of the data frame and then for each column, I'm using as type to convert it to category, which is what you use for categorical type. And then I return that data frame copy. And then finally, I have a calculate percentage difference function that computes the percentage difference in size between two series. So in the main function, I read customers. I simply print the types before conversion. I also calculate the initial memory usage here. Then I have my customers after the type conversion. So I'm using converting to categorical. That's the function I just explained. And then basically I'm taking the zip code prefix, city and state and convert those to categorical types. And finally, I print the types after I've done this conversion. I compute the memory usage and then I compute the percentage difference. And finally, I print out the percentage. So when I run this, then this is what we see. So Let's scroll up to see what's going on. So we have the types before conversion. So I didn't do any manual type fixes here. So as a result, Pandas used objects for the customer ID and for the city and for the state. Basically, the only thing that it detected was that the zip code prefix is an integer. So that's the only type that Pandas actually was able to detect. And you can see we also have memory consumption information here. So there's an index to keep track of all the records. And each of these columns will use quite a bit of memory because we have almost 100,000 records. After conversion, so you can see that we have a customer ID and customer unique ID is still an object. We could convert that to a string if we wanted to. And then we have the zip code prefix, city and state, which are categories because we converted that manually. Then we have, again, the table containing memory consumption information. So these are exactly the same as before because we didn't change anything. So then you can see there's a pretty huge difference between memory that's being used here after switching to categorical type versus what we had before with the object type. 
And same for the state. For the state, it's even more because there's even less variety in states than there is in cities. So if you look at the percentage, you see that city and state, they basically save 90 or even 98% of memory usage. And that means that if you deal with not 100,000 records, but you have, let's say, a million or more of records, then this is going to make a major difference in how performant your data analysis is going to be because you need much and much less memory. Now, categorical types are not always suitable. An example of this you can see here in the customer zip code prefix, where actually using categorical types increased memory usage. And the reason why that happens is that if you look again at this data set, you can see that each of these prefixes is basically a string. But if you look a bit through the data set, you see that basically all of these prefixes are different. So that means that if you switch this to a categorical type, you're not getting any benefits because the data is simply too different. You can't really use categories here, but even worse, because now you don't just store the data, but you also have to store the uh, categories, it's actually going to use a bit more memory than it used before. So that's what happens here with the customer zip code. So in short, it's a good idea if you import data from a CSV file, Excel file, and you want to process that later, you need to take care of how that data is going to be represented internally, especially for big data sets. This is really important. And simply switching everything over to categorical types is not going to be the solution, though in many cases it can actually be a really great solution to help you save memory, and then you'll be able to deal with larger data sets more easily in Python. So I hope this helps you get a slightly better understanding of how Pandas is representing data internally. So the takeaway is that if you have a column of string data and the number of possible values for those strings are much lower than the number of records, then use the categorical type because that's going to save you a lot of memory. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to learn more about how to build well-designed Python applications that analyze data or use machine learning, you might want to watch this video series next where I dive into a data project and analyze and refactor it completely. Thanks for watching and take care.